Hi, so brushless DC motors, they're absolutely everywhere as it happens. You find them in printers. If you've ever been tempted to buy one of those backpacking things, one of those micro-generated wind turbines, that's going to be a brushless DC motor, only used in reverse. Because basically, if you have a coil of wire and a magnet, you can make a motor or a generator. If you stick some current in there, it's going to move. If you move it, it's going to give some current out. When it's arranged as a coil or a magnet, it's either going to be a generator or a motor, depending on how you use it, and you can use it either way. And that's really, really useful. And the thing about brushless motors, obviously, is they're incredibly robust and cheap to make. I mean, they don't have any brushes. So there's very little to wear out apart from the bearings, and they just go on and on and on. And their output is actually quite respectable. So this is from a printer. It's actually about the size you would find in a um, generator. Now, if we take the top off of these, and we're going to do that and have a close-up, what we'll really see is just a ring magnet and some coils. That's all there is. And then some control electronics. Now, there are only two ways of wiring this. One looks like this. And you'll notice it's incredibly like a Y, and so it's called the Y configuration. Those three coils are joined at a centre point. Now, when you look at your motor, when you've got a brushless DC motor, you'll either see three spots or four spots of solder, where the wires to the coils go. If there's four spots, then as you saw in that diagram, that's a Y-configured brushless DC motor. Now, there is another one that's like a triangle, and the coils look like this. Now the Greek letter with a triangle is called the delta, so that's the delta configuration. And you'll notice there are only three junctions in a delta configuration. So if you spot your brushless motor has only three spots of solder on it, it's likely to be delta. If it's got four spots, it's Y configured. What you need to do is identify the one where there's lots of wires in one spot of solder and then promptly ignore it, which is great. And then after that, you proceed exactly the same way. Now. If you have a brushless DC motor and you want to run it, then you can use the control electronics, or you can build your own control electronics, or you can be really, really cheap and buy one of these. It's called an electronic speed controller. Now, I bought this because it was £3 on eBay, and there's no way I could make that for that kind of price. So I bought this, and this will do 20 amps or something crazy. So, really cheap to buy an electronic speed controller. The other thing you need is a servo tester to change the speed. When you want to rotate a motor, then what you need to do is rotate the magnetic field. If you rotate the magnetic field while another fixed magnet is there, which is what brushless DC motors are, they're a fixed magnet in a rotating magnetic field, what you need to do is pump some electricity in each coil in sequence. So we have three coils. You put a little bit of electricity in coil 1 and it creates a magnetic field and gives the magnet a kick, the permanent magnet. It'll just go to its position of least um, energy and just stay there. If you then turn off that current you're supplying to coil 1 and supply it to coil 2, it'll kick it some more. Do the same thing, off with 2, on with 3, it'll kick it some more. And you keep doing that in sequence, you are creating a rotating magnetic field within those coils and that magnet will spin and of course that means your motor will spin. So the electronic controller, what it does is times the sequence of the off and the on to the coils in order to create a rotating magnetic field. Like I say, you can do that yourself. It's just such a lot of trouble to do it when it comes readily packaged so cheaply. But it can be done quite easily yourselves. But what we're going to do is we're going to use an electronic speed controller. And we're going to set these motors up to run from the electronic speed controller. So let's have a closer look at them. Let's start with this one. This is the motor from CD-ROM drive. If you want to know how to get one of these out, I've done some stuff on CD-ROM drive videos where I just show exactly how to get this out. This isn't attached on particularly well. It actually just pulls straight off. And if you'll see in there is a ring magnet. That's the permanent magnet that the electrical rotating field acts against. Here, we've got our little star shape. And that's where the coils are. Now, I look on that and I can see one, two, three spots of solder telling me that this is a delta configuration. So I don't have to try and identify which one is the Y. 
But like I say, if you want to see which one is the Y, it'll be the one with three wires coming to it. This one, we've only got three spots on it, so we, we know which one this is. Now, if we solder three wires to there and connect them to this, we can get that motor to spin, which is exactly what we're going to do. When we look at the PC fan, we have exactly the same thing. There are the coils. There is the permanent magnet that they act against. And if we take that off, which I can't do, we'll see the spots of solder. This is the printer. The printer one's actually really good because you can see the spots right there. So we can just solder to those and we'll be able to run that as a motor. So the first thing we're gonna do is run these motors. Then we're gonna have a look at how to turn them into generators. So we're gonna use this as a printer motor. We're gonna use this because we've got these three nice spots there that are really easy to get to, so let's use it. We've got a whole bunch of electronics around here which are to do with position sensing, that kind of thing. We don't need any of that. In fact, that'll get in the way because we're gonna use that. So the first thing to do is just to strip all of those off. Okay, and here's our printer motor. I've stripped off the electronics, soldered on the three wires. It's got a driver here, so we pop it in there and give that a twiddle. And there we go, running the printer motor. So, as I say, they're all pretty much the same thing. Just identify those wires that you're interested in, solder an extension to them, use one of these cheap controllers, servo tester, and you're away. You can run just about any brushless DC motor. Okay, so we've done the CD-ROM motor, but it's exactly the same for every single brushless motor you're going to come across. I've soldered a wire to each of the three important wires. All I have to do is put that case back on, just make sure it's not catching. I've attached it here to the electronic speed controller. It really doesn't matter which order you put, so each of these output wires is going to one of the input wires. I've got it on a power supply here at 6 volts, and I've got a servo tester on it so that I can test it. And there we go running a brushless motor. It's a piece of cake. Okay, so that's pretty easy and a bit of fun. The other side of it, like I say, is generation. Quite often you want to turn these into generators and for good reason, they're quite good generators. Now, it actually emulates three phase. So what we do with it is a three phase rectifier. Now a three phase rectifier looks like this. If you're unsure about things like rectification and doing the circuits, have a look at the video all about stepper motors. Uh, I'd go into a bit more depth there. But basically we need to grab some diodes and arrange them like that drawing. Now the diodes we can use are a whole range of things actually. Lots of people recommend lots of different things. I tend to go for whatever I've got lying around or what's the cheapest or <laughs> just what works for me. It means I use an awful lot of 1N4007s, although I'm always told to use something else. Um, it matters if you've got a very heavy voltage drop, uh, you're not getting much output and the forwards drop is gonna have a, a large impact. Otherwise, to be honest, if I get anything out, especially of scrap, I'm usually very happy. So we're gonna just use bog standard 1-4007s, so we're gonna make a, a three-phase rectifier bridge, and then we're gonna test its output. Okay, so to make the rectifier circuit, you need six diodes. You take two, three sets of two, and you put the silver to the black. Give it a twist, and repeat that for the other two, silver to black. When you've done that, you'll end up with something looking like this, where each wire has two diodes at the end, one with the, the silver line and one with the black line. You take all of the blacks and twist them together. And in that little mix, put a black wire because these ones are your DC negative out. Okay, that's it, done. We're now ready to give it a spin and see what we get out of it. So these are obviously positive DC, negative DC. And it's really easy to know because it's the black end to the black wire, negative. Silver end to the red wire, positive. And you deal with all brushless motors the same way. 
Okay, there it is connected up to the voltmeter and we've got it on DC volt reading. Let's give it a spin. I'm not sure you can see that. There we go. So we can get a couple of volts out of that easily enough. So there you go, brushless DC motors, how to use them as motors and how to use them as generators. It doesn't matter which way around they are, whether they're delta or Y, you just follow the same procedures, identify the ends of the coils, solder them onto a th um, three-phase bridge rectifier and get your output, or solder them onto an electronic speed controller and spin them up as a motor. Anyway, I hope that was of interest. Thank you very much for watching, and please do subscribe.